Welcome everyone to Creatives Chat, episode 31, featuring Chase. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Creatives Chat. Creative minds get together and chat about who knows what. We shall begin our show now. Streaming from Retro Earth Studio and brought to you by We Are Storically Conscious Brand Apparel. And welcome to another episode of Creatives Chat. Hello, I'm Rusty. I'm Peter. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is a special edition of Creatives Chat. Hope you're all having a wonderful Thanksgiving. So who we got on our show today? Ooh, Rusty, we have a real curator of bangers, bops, and hits. This writer and rapper doesn't miss. He's a free thinker who indulges in music, photography, streetwear, and everything in between. A true creative spirit is joining us here today for this little holiday special on Creative Chat. I'm happy to have on Chase, a.k.a. Freelance Flame, a.k.a. Pay for Chase. Chase, he was on our community panel. Yes, he was. All right, everybody. Let's say hello to Chase again. Oh, Chase, how's it going, man? Mr. Oh, Paper Chase man. official himself. Hello, what is going on, Peter? Oh, nothing much, man. Um, well, first off, happy Thanksgiving to you. <laughs> Thank you, almost there, yep. Happy Thanksgiving, canceled Thanksgiving. I don't even, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> right, so let's just get off the ground running now you're one of the most like eccentric energetic people i've met and i love that you know you have that drive for life and you have a passion for it and i'm just curious like when did you really start to get into this creative expression of like writing and rapping and even photography like why not dude oh man i don't even know like i i have always been like I, i love to express myself um I, it, it was always a thing within me. And then it really kind of started to come to fruition probably like eight to 10 years ago where I really broke out of my mm-hmm. shell. I was never like the cool guy or anything like that. And like, it's, it, it's funny. Cause like people like that know me now, I don't know w- what the perception of me is. I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy to be like, Oh, I'm the shit. Because I'm not. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like, I really started breaking out of my shell probably about, about 10 years ago in, in high school. I, I, I've always had a really tight knit group of friends and I've only, you know, I've never made any really enemies along the way. I try not to. Um, but yeah, like it, it mainly started in, in fifth grade when I was like 10, I took acting classes. Oh, nice. Acting and modeling classes. And I really liked those. Honestly, it was a lot of fun. Um, there was one point where I kind of got cold feet cause they were going to start auditioning kids to like go to Hollywood and do stuff. And thank God I didn't with all we know now about Hollywood and what they do to kids. <laughs> Honestly, thank God in that sense. But, um, yeah, so doing all that, you know, it made me realize that I, I have a passion for like the stage and, um, that's kind of also where I got my, like for, uh, streetwear and fits and, and learning how to pose which it's which led to photography of course because that was like yeah. something that I learned on, on the other side um and then it didn't really come back middle school was we, I made a lot of YouTube videos like with me and my friends we made some YouTube videos back in the day oh, I don't yeah. even think they exist anymore but like school <laughs> projects and stuff I always like those and then in uh, my I always liked also watching Whose Lines It Anyway and like stuff oh, like that. Classic, classic. You got to be quick. I'd, I'd snap if I could, but you got to be quick, right? And um, then in high school, I took a drama improv class and that led to me realizing that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a pretty funny guy. I like this. I like, uh, <laughs> like making people laugh. I like the stage. This is fun because I always thought it was something that honestly just came naturally to everybody to like be comfortable in front of people be be comfortable Mm. expressing yourself be comfortable like you know making people laugh and all that but there are so many people out there that don't have that feeling about themselves like they don't feel confident in themselves they don't feel like they're good enough um Mm. like public speaking is the number one fear in anybody which to me is just ridiculous because like i love it i love it so much um 
so yeah, after taking those classes, it made me realize, oh yeah, I forgot that I really like this. <laughs> and then like senior year, I started kind of like, I would like spit freestyles and stuff as a joke, of course, because it's also like with improv class, you got to be quick and witty and like, you know, just as uh, for fun. Uh, and then I always, as far as the hip hop part of it goes, like my, I found out recently actually. So my dad, I, growing up, I always listened to hip hop music right like growing up my dad he would always play the clean version of every like he would play like clean versions of nwa and he had <laughs> in the trunk and it was hilarious like i didn't know that there were bad words in rap like he would listen to like either will smith or jurassic five or something and then like the clean yeah. versions of like gangster rap and um i i thought that was hilarious but that's re really where i got my passion was from my dad and i found yeah. out he started listening to hip-hop because of my grandma my grandma actually got him into hip-hop music and i didn't know this until like three months ago and she's like yeah you know i i showed your dad all that stuff at first i'm like are you serious grandma what the hell um so i guess it's just been a passion of my family for 40 years or something but uh yeah then after after high school i started um just kind of doing it more and more and then Evan George, as you know, you probably know, Mr. Evan George works with Marshall a lot. Uh, that guy is the freaking goat, and he produces the hell out of any song that he makes. And he was learning how to produce, and I, I kind of started getting back into photography around that time. But then I was like, well, I've been doing these freestyles as a joke. You want me to just start laying stuff down? And then he and I, I mean, and he's one of my best friends in the whole world, for sure. Um, and he and I just kind of started making tracks and whatnot, and then next thing you know, years later here we are and you know every day i try and get better at my craft and um express myself through that and i got the no cap behind me as you can see oh yeah. and the the whole the thing trap initially friday. started <laughs> trap friday oh yeah dude trap friday that's almost hitting its year anniversary on friday oh um, no way so like the, it's also kind of a joke the no cap thing comes from we just kept saying that that night at the studio and then like i don't even know why but i think it's because people were trying to fall asleep because we recorded that whole album in literally one night that whole thing was oh, made in wow. one night for making the beats writing mo like 90 percent wow. of that was done in one night yeah yeah she's crazy dope. oh yeah um but yeah so i really got into it honestly as a joke because like i was like well what can we make and then we started making good stuff like if you listen to our first project even even a lot of the stuff on Trap Friday too, it's all like generic lines, but I know they are, right? So it's kind of a, uh, not necessarily a parody, but like um, showing how easy it is that anybody can make hip hop music. And I got a lot more to say about all, all that too. But as far as the expression goes, um, I felt that that's something that I've just had in me for a long time. Cause I mean, people have labeled me as obnoxious or annoying or, uh, People used to think I was gay back in the day, which I'm not, but you never know 100%, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now, now it's, I'm just doing me. Like, I'm just doing me. And honestly, like, when, oh, if oh, anybody's yeah. hating on that, like, that's just fuel for the fire. You know what I mean? You're, if you got haters, that shows you're doing something right, because even Jesus had haters, and he's freaking Jesus Christ. So I love it. Mic drop. No, I think it's <laughs> hilarious, though. Like, there's the funny thing that's the being eccentric and being like an eccentric as i see it, is really just like someone who's energized and upbeat and not superficial about it they're just right. actually like that's their state of being and i find that right. that's such a weird misconception with people nowadays is that they somehow associate that with like femininity as a guy and it's right just, like, like so like every male is supposed to just be like a grumpy curmudgeon just like <laughs> Huffling and puffling and being a Debbie Downer all the time. It's like, dude, yeah. you're kidding me. Like, we're the big, like, I feel like the masculine energy is some of the most, like, I don't want to say it like a bad way, but like the childish, Child. like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I know that because, like, I went to O'Day, so it's like all guys' school. It's like, yo, I can't tell you how many jokes and just how absurd every day was because it's like when you're around with your homies, there's no women to impress, there's no macho right. thing that comes out. So it's just yeah. clowning and just jokes and pranks right. and just absurd behavior that right. would never and apply in a social no. setting. No. And like the thing is, I, I've I've said a lot about this to like my friends and stuff, but there's a lot of what I like to call fake alphas out there, which which like where they're posing as something that they're not. So like 
oh, I'm big macho tough guy, but like actually I'm afraid to acknowledge my feelings and like I don't really care about people. All right, that's not very cool, man. Like honestly to me, a true alpha is someone who's going to be confident in who he is, take care of himself and those around him and just go get what he wants out of life. You know what I mean? That's to me what that means. Oh, dude, for sure. And I think that's just right there where it's you, you kind of tap into the the superficial nature of a lot of people that are just really, I mean, it goes in the same thing with the feminine aspect, just the ditzy, like, oh, play dumb and things like that, you know? Yeah. There's so many superficial aspects of our, like, our entire society. That's why I think it's so funny and really value you as a person and just like a creator just because you're always just your genuine self, no matter how like the setting is. And I think that's yeah. something that I've always gotten to say is just like, oh, dude, that's just his vibe. Like yeah. a fellow smiley person. I relate yeah. to that. <laughs> exactly. And that's, I feel like that's why we always vibe. Like the first time I met you, you it was you and your wife. And I just kept being like, Peter. Like, Jeez. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, uh, that's not me like putting on an act. Like that's who I am. I'm trying to like remember you so that I can be like, okay, this guy, next time I see him, I got to remember who he is. And I want him to know that, like, I'm open to having a good time and a good conversation with him. Whatnot. Oh, yeah. And like, that's 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 all I'm about. That's what I'm just I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Well, I think that's the thing that's funny is like, you know, the the aspect of authenticity. And I, even like in our first conversation, you know, we talked about like super deep, like like what was the water fasting into meditation into like spirituality? Oh yeah, into just oh, like, was, oh, like <laughs> just how'd you day go? <laughs> like, just like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like blown away. I was like, damn, we're getting really deep on day one. Well, and I think that's just the thing is that when you find, you know, it's like the law of inertia, law of attraction, whatever, it's that like attracts like. And, you know, it's when you cross paths with people that vibe with you on that energetic level, you know, it's that right. it's like, I, it's so cliche. I just, I'm going to get it branded because I say it all the time, but real recognizes real. It's true. And it's a little bit of a cliche saying for some people, but it's just that aspect of, you know, it's like, no, you can see fake shit. And you right. can see people who are disingenuine. And when you finally find someone that's like, oh, that's actually your mode of behavior. Like, that's right. who you are as a person. Yeah. I value that because I can't tell you how much, especially in like the, the creator scene and creative scene, there's a lot of people that just get caught up in the negative aspects of things. Right. For versus sure. people that really focus on the, you know, the upbeats and potential. And I think that's one of the things of why I like hip hop. Like, you know, so yeah. for our listeners, why don't you explain a little bit like what's, if you could describe hip hop, what would you say? I would say that hip hop, rest in peace. I don't know if it's a thing anymore. I don't know if the do is there. Paper Chase is still alive and well. Uh, but I would say that hip hop is something that you can put on and have a good time. That's the whole goal. That's why I make music. I'm not making it to be like, oh, I'm going to get hella deep with this song. Oh, this one right here is going to be a banger. No, I want you to put on something that you can enjoy no matter who you are. Simple as that. And that's such a pure, that's such a pure perspective to hip hop because especially in like the music scene, there's a lot of clout. There's a lot of just do things to get the recognition. Right. And I mean, again, like when you're a genuine person approaching music, it comes through. And that's why I think it's so funny where you're like, oh, it can kind of be seen as a parody. But it's like, I think <laughs> that doing those so much more deeper. And it's, again, it's that artistic aspect where it's like, no, it's just showing like the potentials within each person to make bangers, like on demand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to make bangers. Honestly, that's all I'm trying to do is just strictly make songs that will get people listening. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the goal. Like that's, because that's how... When I listen to music, I'm listening to stuff I enjoy. I don't, I'm not looking mm. like, oh, he played a C chord at this time in the song, which was incredibly artistically intuitive. I'm like, who cares? Like, literally, if it sounds good, I'm going to listen to it. You know what I mean? Like, and some people aren't that way. Like, some people will read shit books, but be like, oh, but you got to understand the message. I don't care. It's not good. Like, if, if I don't enjoy it, why would I, why would I bother with it? You know what I mean? And there's so many people, and that's, here's one thing that I say all the time is, Artistic integrity is for artists who are salty that they didn't make it big because then they'll say, oh, but they sold out. They don't have any integrity. No, they made stuff people wanted to hear. There's no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, fired. shots fired. <laughs> Come at me. No, but I think that's something that's right there is that it's life and music and, you know, creative expression. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. When, you, when you get caught up in all the frou-frou aspects of it, you know, I feel like that's when you lose the special, the, the secret sauce, so to say. Exactly, exactly. 
Hmm. Um, so I guess that's the, the transition that I want to get into is, you know, you have a wide variety of, you know, like sounds that you associate with. And mm-hmm. I recently saw that a uh, band's getting back together. So so why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about like who's in aisle eight and, you know, how did you really stumble into work with this group? Because, I mean, I remember seeing you guys perform at the Emerald City Gala and I was just <laughs> like, yo, what is this? This is <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so in ILA, that's the boys. I'm actually technically a founding member of it, but you only see me either on stage taking pics or, I mean, occasionally popping out of a box or uh, being the hype man for a song or two. But that's yeah. not to say that I'm not fully part of the group. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. the guy on the bench. I'm the sixth man. I am on standby at all times. So in ILA, Let's let's walk it through here. So NIL8 started officially back way long ago, like 10 years ago. Uh-huh. And it was a small group of three people. It was Evan, who's the drummer, who was the drummer back then. Jason, the guitarist, who was also the guitarist. And our friend Alex Davis. Shout out Alex Davis. Also a dope producer, dope rapper. He's dropping an album in like three or four days. Super going to be legit AF. Um, and then I remember... Evan's dad recording the first songs on a four track that he had no editing or anything. These were all just live takes. Like you can look it up on YouTube. We don't have access to the old YouTube because we lost the login and we don't have a way to recover it. So there's an old NIL8 YouTube and then there's the actual (laughs) one. Um, But the old one has that stuff on there. But um, yeah, so I mean, I came into running with the guys well well let's see tristan and i have known each other since we were eight years old tristan's the lead singer so we've known each other for like 16 years um like that guy and i can literally know what the other one is thinking at any given time and i'm not even exaggerating like if we're together someone will make a joke and we'll have a conversation and complete nonsense but it's fully literate and (laughs) same thing same thing with jason i've known him since we were like 12 same and, and and evan jason evan since we were probably about 12 uh, Jason and I have literally our own language that we invented. I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, a language that we invented that nobody else can understand. Um, and I live with him. So there's that. That's and then <laughs> Evan going. and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, he used to be uh, in this other group of friends that I later took over his spot in, basically. And then he and I started being friends, too. No, there's no bad blood there at all. Like that's, that's, that's just, you know, middle school people floating around doing stuff. Not like girls, like, oh my God, can you believe that? As long as I did this. And then they never speak again. Not like that at all. Like th- those guys are still good friends of mine. Um, but yeah, Evan and I just started hanging out and stuff. Cause he lived like a block away, which I didn't know oh. until we started hanging out. And then uh, Ariel, the, also, Evan does production and drums. I, I didn't mention that. Jason plays guitar. I mean, I mentioned that in the other one. Uh, and then Ariel, um, he is actually the same age as my sister. And so I've known him and his family probably since my sister was like five. But so I was probably about eight, about the same time I knew Tristan because they, he and my sister had classes together and stuff in school. And so that he plays rhythm guitar, does backing vocals. And then there's Hayden, ah, Mr. Hayden, who's right on the other side of the wall behind me that you can't see. He's in the living room. And um, we actually met Hayden via a Craigslist ad, and now I live with him. So <laughs> we, so in the forming days of what we now know as NIL8, it was me, Evan, Jason, and Tristan recording the album at a place called Uber Beats in Linwood slash Muckle T.O. It's super dope. Honestly, if anybody needs a place to record, Sean Walker, shout out Sean Walker. That's my guy. Um, so we're recording there and we're like, okay, well, we need someone to play bass because Evan's dad recorded the bass on the first album. Like any bass that you hear on that first album is literally Evan's dad, Dave George, freaking bass god. Um, and so we're like, all right, well, how do we get a bass player? Like, how do we find a legit bass player? And then uh out of nowhere i don't even know how the idea came about we're like oh let's make a craigslist ad and and put it out seeking a musician and sure enough we get a response obviously we thought we were gonna like i don't know what we even expected because like what what 21 year old this is like where we're 21 i was 20 at the time who's using craigslist to find bands (laughs) at 20 years old like like what the hell 
And then next thing you know, we get a response from Hayden, um, and he came up while we were recording the album. He came to the studio and jammed with us, and now I live with him. And now he's in the band. So uh, there's that. And uh, we've we've been tight knit ever since. They have a full studio album, their first album. Uh, they have an EP that they released a little while ago that we recorded in a storage unit. So that's pretty cool. And then, yeah, it was that that place was weird. And then um, they have a full length album that we've been sitting on actually since the beginning of the year. We were going to drop it and go on tour this year, but it hit and that canceled that like we had the full tour booked out west coast and everything like we were right about to start promoting it and then COVID hit everything got shut down we're like damn and we didn't even drop the album because it was really bad timing with yeah. everything that happened yeah. over the year and so we're like well no one's going to pay attention to this like what do we do so there is a full studio album that is being sat on right now that is about to be crazy like i have the whole thing on a private soundcloud link hey, hey i'm not gonna send that to anybody but it is it is coming out soon so um that's how i kind of came to roll with them winding it back and i figured okay well how can i be of assistance so i can help with um outside perspectives from the music because me i don't even call i don't consider myself a musician even though i make songs and make music i don't call myself a musician um i would mm -hmm. say i'm an entertainer if anything and uh so i offer the perspective of here's what the people are going to want like here's what i think of it as just a listener of it mm -hmm. and as someone who is a obviously like a huge fan of the music i can i can have a really honest perspective but then i help them you know with promo and taking pics and managing funds and figuring out like growth strategies all that kind of stuff i mean they, they all have those talents too but um i think it's important that a lot of a lot of musicians don't not these guys of course but a lot of musicians like think things are just going to happen you know what i mean like you you just you're like oh well we work hard and we have some songs and some demos so like it's going to happen right but no that's not the case at all like look at marshall and the mlb man like they grind so hard and they're finally oh, yeah. just now like getting the recognition that they deserve on the local scale and then it'll go national you know so you got to really grind for it and that's a huge inspiration i think to to me to do to do what i do with with the boys but yeah we've known oh, each yeah. other a long time so that's how i came to run with them it's just kind of grandfathered in i love it i love it man. <laughs> well because it's just one of those things too where it's you know i saw you and you were doing a hype man like backup vocals and it's just something when, you know, you can actually be a part of a different group. And I think that's something that people don't understand is that it's a full team aspect to a lot right. of these great bands and artists that are successful. It's like their entourage is just as important because if you have people that, you know, lead you astray, that inflate the ego, all this other stuff where it's like stuff just falls apart because mm -hmm. then the you're not greasing the wheels, you know, it's exactly. it's everything you have the car. But like if you don't have the good fuel, if you don't take care of the tires, you don't check the engine. It's all yep. those types of things. So it's it's an interesting take because it's the one thing that always stands out for me is, you know, it's that, inter, inter, I guess you'd say it's the introspective journey, but also approach to someone who is able to kind of see all these things in like the bigger picture and kind of be more mm -hmm. tactful and, you know, strategical about it. So in the entertainer's eye, you know, yeah. how important is strategy just in terms of just how you approach like photography and just like helping out the band and even just like your own like rap career? So I am not a big planner because I think, is it Murphy's Law? Is it is it Murphy's Law that if something will, can go wrong, it will go wrong? Potentially. I'd have to look that it Murphy's up. Law? <laughs> I'm going to look it up. I'm going to the internet right now. So I, uh, let's see. But um the way that i see it uh if yeah murphy's law okay murphy's law basically if anything can go wrong it will go wrong so why even plan ahead that's what I, that's the way i see it right so like if you have a plan and it's super tight knit and you're like okay here's exactly what i'm gonna do on this day and then this day and then this day you can have a schedule that's fine if you have a plan to to schedule stuff and you know make a plan about it that's fine but just know that there are going to be speed bumps along the way so mm. you know right now like we're releasing the the annihilate the movie right so that's a schedule that we have each day we're releasing a different part once we hit 100 subs hit the hit the subs we're just going to drop the full thing so whether we get to the full thing first or we just get it and you guys get it early 
one or the other. Love it. Um, but as far as planning goes, I mean, like, I've never really been one to to plan necessarily because I I like to adapt. I like to think, mm. adapt, and and work from there. You know. So like back in the day, I always got scolded for not using my planner in school and shit. And I'm like, I don't want to use this. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I know myself to know that I'm not going to look at it. You know what I mean? So if I try and strat, like, so as far as strategy goes, yes, have ideas, have, have core values that you can use and have a schedule to do them in a timeline. But as far as like a specific airtight plan, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right, et cetera, I don't think that's a good idea because if one step goes wrong and you don't have other adaptations along the way, then your whole plan gets thrown out of whack. And Perfect. it's all plan A. There's no plan B because plan B sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that you hit the nail on the head in terms of just the most important thing for anyone. And I feel like a creative process and life in general is being able to adapt. I think that's just one of the things that people get so caught up in nowadays, especially because of, you know, the fear of failure, making mm -hmm. mistakes is wrong, all this other stuff that let's just get shoved down our throats in school yep. is that when something goes awry, like you completely shut down and just have like yeah. breakdowns and just can't handle it. And it's just like, dude, like, and I think that's funny that it's, you know, I didn't know about your improv background, which makes so much sense because it's just like, dude, that's one of the biggest things about improvisation. Right. It's just like improvisation is rather it's just being able to just go in the flow yeah. and really tap and see this is a more deeper spiritual thing is because it's tapping into that flow. It's yeah. tapping into the effortlessness of just being and just being in the moment and just going with it and just like right. life usually rewards you and gives you those alley-oops to slam dunk. <laughs> yeah. And you got to know, like, here's the thing. You're not going to hit every slam dunk that you're alley-ooped, right? And yeah. so I think so many people are afraid of failure. But let me tell you right now, failure is your best friend because failure is going to tell you how to win next time, right? You're never going to take a win if you don't take an L, okay? There's nobody, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, name any sports player, boxer, whatever you want. They got L's. They got L's. And you know what? When they win, they win really big because they take that loss and they use that to improve and get an even bigger win next time. And so, like you're saying with the with the ebb and flow of the creative energy, you know, uh, I think that's really important to to keep just all throughout your life. You know, be be adaptable, be able to to just do what is required of the situation, but don't don't bend your values. Like, don't bend who you are, but bend. Yeah who you can be. Ooh. And I think that's just the funniest thing about that is, you know, in terms of what we're taught for life skills, we're not really taught to be that genuine, authentic person that is our unique spirit. You know, I find that we're very conditioned and cultured to, you know, save face or look good for this crowd or look good for this crowd. And it just yep. breeds nothing but just self-loathing, self, like really worthlessness, doubt. Oh, rumination, yeah. depression. And I find that those that have been through, you know, a, quite an interesting journey of trials and tribulations, they're always the ones that are usually the most kind and sincere people. Like they're yeah. just super genuine and just like, well, whatever. Like you're going to think about yeah. me what you're going to think about me. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Like I, I'm, yeah, I, absolutely. I, I don't even have anything to add on that. It's just, it's so true. Like um, the more, the more open your mind is, the, the better you're going to do in life and and the less you think about what other people are going to think about you the happier you're going to be with yourself and and your life and see right there you know valuing your own perspective yeah that's something that really resonated with me because it's like how many of us discredit and don't trust ourselves i think that's right. the one thing i always see is you know so like low like as you would say worthlessness is probably a better way to put it is probably like the number one issue that almost every person has, you know, right. that doesn't go through this process of really valuing and self loving themselves. And it's just dude, like, in terms of your own journey, like, how did you come to this point of like, accepting yourself and challenging yourself and really just like, being your most genuine chase? Well, <laughs> I, I don't really, oh, man, 
Oh, that's that's a heavy loaded one. question. That's a loaded question. Um, let's see. <laughs> so I don't know. I never did my homework in school. I've always had <laughs> I've always had this mentality. Uh, what I what, what that is is I've always had this mentality of either fuck it or I don't know if I can can I swear on here? Can I is that okay? Is, okay. Your most genuine either, self. <laughs> either fuck it or like oh who cares or doesn't matter or mm. cuz the way that I see myself in in my perspective and and what I learned shout out Mr. Geary to my one of my high school teachers taught me philosophy English like a bunch of classes myth and legends dude is a fucking oh, yeah. go dude fucking having five semesters took every class I could with him pretty much um but what I learned about myself and the the way that I have to finally phrase it in a package is i am a mm. realistic optimistic nihilist meaning i'm going to look at everything that is in a positive way but know that at the end of the day that it does not matter because we're all going to die so right and, and that's that's just how i keep my my that's how i go about it you know at the end of the day you can get mad oh i had to wait in line at the store for five extra minutes who who cares whatever like that's no skin off my back like were you in a rush no you have to be somewhere no like whatever like you're it's fine oh you're here someone, still <laughs> you're here still yeah like you're alive uh oh so and so called me a name okay well cool like they probably hate their lives so fuck <laughs> them whatever <laughs> like who cares um i don't remember who it was it might have been i don't know if it was it's an mlk quote or something but um like if if people are being rude to you mean to you or or hateful you know don't be mad at them for being hateful, be thankful that you don't hold that amount of hate in your heart, right? So if you are gonna be yourself, then just be yourself. And I always get in trouble like, oh, my sister, dude, uh, like if we ever go to family events or anything, she hates it because I'll just act a fool. And she's like, Chase, you're embarrassing me. I'm like, how am I embarrassing you? I'm the one doing it. This is me. Like, I, I'm, I'm not embarrassing you. I'm the one embarrassing myself and I know it. And it's funny because then like, if you're willing to make yourself a fool, cause I love, I like, I like trolling people, honestly. Like I'm not gonna go on the internet and like spew hateful words or whatnot. Yeah. But like, if I can get a laugh for at least myself and make myself happy and it doesn't happen at the expense of somebody else, then that's fine. Like, so for example, I went to my cousin's wedding and I'm out there and the, I meet these guys, no idea who they are, never met them in my life, just some friends of, of the groom, okay? And the, I tell them, oh, I'm paying for Chase. They're like, oh, can you spit some bars? So I spit a full 64 bar verse to these guys, drunk as hell at this wedding and they start getting really uncomfortable and i'm like oh this is great this is great because they asked for it right I'm like <laughs> you asked for this so here's what you're gonna get and then my my sister's like dude that was so embarrassing i'm like not for me i was having a great time because it made them uncomfortable because they asked for it so like if people here's here's what i find is if people are gonna like try and like have a laugh at your expense you turn that around and you say, all right, I'm going to give you exactly what you want and you're not going to like it and I'm going to find it hilarious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that, yeah that's yeah. the way I see it. That just turn, turn everything into the best situation that you can. So like, you know, if someone's, if someone's being, say, rude to you, at, at, say you're at your work or whatever and someone's being rude to you, well, you can turn that around and kind of mess with them and then just get a laugh out of it. You're not you're not making their day any worse. You're not being mean to them. You're just kind of spinning the situation so that you're not having a bad time. You're having a good time. You know what I mean? Like you got to think of everything in, in that light to even, even the worst kind of stuff where you can have fun. Well, it's, it's funny. Cause I think one of the things is I've definitely gotten in that boat where it's just like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I always get the looks with depending on who I'm with of, how could he do that? How could he say that? How could he just, he doesn't know these people. Cause yeah. it's, it's really truly a thing where I don't have shame. Right. You yes. know what I mean? And it's cause yes. it's like, it's something that has to really come through you first to feel it. And for me, right. I just do what I want. Like I'm yes. obviously going to respect other people, but like, yes. I have no issue saying what's on my mind. Like if it yeah. makes you uncomfortable, then it's just like, that's a, that's a you thing, not a me thing. And exactly. Well, the question that I have though, in terms of that relation is, you know, it takes a different type of courage that not a lot of people really understand or value. So it's, 
has that always just been a part of your personality and nature or is it something that like you had to really grow into because i grew up kind of introverted like people may not believe that because i can talk a lot but like it's one of those things where i was always very shy and observant i never really opened up until i got to recognize those similar things i was just like oh people enjoy this like i can make people happy like i enjoy this this is pretty fun yeah um i don't know i mean i know like like back as a boy um i mean back as a boy <laughs> back back as a wee boy um i mean i don't know let's see like back in the day i all my friends until i was like in third grade were girls and that was honestly kind of badass um but that's why everybody thought i was gay so whatever playground see yeah exactly see you i got a like, harem <laughs> yeah exactly um but let's see so <laughs> there was that like evan evan specifically has told me that he remembers me singing to girls on the playground in elementary school and i think that's fucking awesome because that's really funny um but i don't even know where it comes from i mean there was that then then my folks got apart and i kind of went into my shell and I was like, oh, I don't really know how to approach life. And then I made some really good core friends uh, that I that I wrote it out with for a long time. Mm. And I wouldn't say that it was necessarily like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I was necessarily introverted, but I also guess I just didn't know how to express myself. But then as mm. I got older and was able to you know, get out into the world, ride my bike everywhere and all that, like go out and like do stuff, you know, uh, I started to realize that there's no problem in, in being who you are. And I've always thought, I mean, I've, I've never really known how to put it into words until the past few years, but the way I see it is why fit in when you can stand out and in mm. a genuine way, not like, Oh my God, look at me. I'm so quirky. I dyed my hair pink and shaved off half my head and got all these piercings and look at all my cute little stuff that I'm wearing. In reality, you hate your life because you're someone that you're not. But if, if that's genuine and that's how you express yourself and you have no shame about it, like I love when you said I have no shame because I have had so many people tell me like, dude, you have no shame. Like I'm like, well, yeah, shame is a worthless emotion. So, so whatever. <laughs> shame is a worthless emotion. <laughs> That's the way I see it. That's all I'm saying on that. Well, it's a, it's hilarious that you put it that way because it just goes in the point where, you know, I know we're having fun in this and you do can already feel the energy coming from it, folks that are listening. Yeah. But it's just the concept of like, you know, this is a very deeply profound, like spiritual understanding of, you know, and in spiritual, you can see it as the intangible or, or knowledge of inner self. Um, right. But, you know, just being a person who chooses to really conquer their own vessel their own mind their own emotions and really become mm -hmm. a, a master or self-mastery and or you could say master of self or self-mastery i'd say and just being someone that like has that ability to kind of look within and reflect upon things you know it shows a different type of courage that i don't think a lot of people really value and truly what i've come to experience is that not a lot of people have so in terms of your own development, like when did you really flip that kind of like introspective search, but inward to really kind of level up? Shrooms. I'm Dude. serious. Like, <laughs> like, uh, the, the, the first I know, time. I had no doubt in my mind when you said it, I was just like. <laughs> no, I know. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, the first time that I may or may not have, uh, consumed fungus, I realized that like I had a huge ego death and I feel like everybody needs to have that at least once in their lives because once you have that feeling and like get it in you and open up your mind one time it sticks with you forever you know like you can always flash back on okay this is how I should be thinking and this is how my I know my mind can think this way so let me keep mm. thinking this way but that's really when I realized like I'm just going to make the most of my time here. And now the thing is I have to have my off switch. And so what I call it is Eeyore mode. Whenever I have to be boring or like have to be around a bunch of people and can't act a fool, like say there are situations where you have to be like, okay, I got to I got to watch what I'm doing. Dial it down. I just got to dial it down a little bit. And um, so yeah, that's Eeyore mode. And I just got to turn it on and then I'll get all boring. 
like usually it's if I'm out having a great time, like say in Vegas or something. And I'm like, like me in Las Vegas is, is just a blast. Cause I'll be just screaming at the top of my lungs, no regard for what is going on around me. I'm just having a great time. And everyone's like, you gotta be quiet. I'm like, hold on. Like, just, just let me turn it down just a notch. But, <laughs> but it's it so out. hard because yeah, it's so hard because it's so genuine. You know what I mean? Like if, if it was fake, right. it would be easy right. to turn off. Right. Yeah. But if it's real, it's hard to not be yourself. And I think so many people have to realize that if you are yourself, your life just gets easier. Like I have so much, for example, contempt for going to a nine to five job or whatever. I know that I got to do it to pay the bills, but like, I'm not like, oh yeah, my career is really blossoming and I'm going to get that promotion and, and I'm going to get my raise. No, who fucking cares? Like that's all literally garbage. And if you if you don't follow your dreams or at least know what you want to do in life then you're going to just fall off the path and be another fucking cog in the machine true and you know the thing that i kind of really want to expand on and just kind of throw a little like you know maybe a little spiritual hair hell mary on this one is i the way i interpret the ego you know it's not necessarily a death it's more of a healing because i see our ego yeah. is kind of like that past pain body of you know our childhood self that kind of gets screwed over you know some shit doesn't go the way we thought it would but we get hurt it's lack of right. love it's all these different things and even when you have that process go on and you do choose to take that process of recognizing something new you come into this new ground of being and i find that it's really when you let go or surrender to the things of the past that you really start to become yourself even more that more genuine pure self yeah and it's really funny that you say that because in terms of just like there's no point not being yourself you can tell when it's kind of fake and superficial mm -hmm. it takes again a different type of inner looking to really mm -hmm. even come to that question you know not only are you questioning you know what do you want to do with your life but the first question that always comes up is really who am i and then right. you figure out your purpose. Yeah. You know, we have that, I feel like we have that backwards as, backwards as a society that people have really just gone off into this career path. They get so identified with this work, 50 years goes by, then you're done and you don't know what life's all about. Right, right. I mean, you can still be living in the rat race and know who you are and know that you're trying to get out. Like the thing mm -hmm. is, if like, you know, if you're, say say you're say you're a lab rat right mm -hmm. or a rat on a wheel say if you don't know that you're in a cage then you're not in a cage because to you the cage does not exist because perception is reality as we know yeah. and if you don't know that you are trapped then you don't know how to get out or you don't visualize a way out and so when you're stuck in this mindset and you don't know who you are you're the rat without looking at you know looking to your left and right seeing all these other other rats trapped in their cages and you just want a way out of it you know at least at least you can be conscious about it and know okay i am in this box but i don't have to be in this box i'm gonna find a way out of this box or at least if i am in this box i am aware that i am and i know what the situation does, is that i'm in instead of just being blissfully ignorant to it all mm. right i like that no I, I completely agree in that that aspect of perception and just how you can truly adjust your lifestyle and i think it's the funny thing that you said earlier you know bringing it back to the adaptation point where you know you have your values you have your kind of compass right and yeah. you have that set your direction but you right. know that life's just going to do whatever it wants yeah. and just enjoy the ride and be able to you know adjust and overcome whatever arises and just that type of like flexibility and shift in perspective can be life-changing. So, you know, the one thing I would like to say though, is that, you know, it's not just like the psychedelics or as I call them, consciousness expanders. <laughs> yeah, um, there you go. There you go. You know, it's not just like those experiences of those, because I know plenty of people who have tried them, but it's that process of assimilating and assimilation, you yep. know, bringing that understanding to a practical point of application that is so important so in terms of just kind of like healing yourself and taking this life in the next gear, you know, how do you really tap into that kind of creative entrepreneurial spirit of just living out and playing your life? Well, this year, this year has been tough. I mean, this year, 
it's it's really killed my vibe because I guess I didn't realize until this year how much of an extrovert I am, like how much I love being around people. Like you know, mm. certain people are uh, unbearable, but it isn't, isn't anything. But I still love them. Still love them. Um, so like, I guess what really taps me in is with being with other people who are both of like interest and of different mindsets, if that makes sense, mm. oh, where yeah. you can, you follow the same path, but you all have different ideas as to how to get where you're going. And so mm. that if you collaborate all of that, that you can do, you know, the, the different creative styles, the different ways of going about it, the different energies and whatnot, you know, you can really pull from all of that and like make a path for yourself with that um yeah. you know I, I i feel like it's really important to to learn something every day and even earlier today i had a conversation about this with my manager at work like i said oh i learned something today he's like yeah after three years of being here i'm like what it's bad to learn something is it is that like frowned upon that i i should just immediately know everything and then close myself in a box and be like oh this is all this is my max you know what i mean so <laughs> I feel like the more that you learn, the more that you try, the more that you fail, the more that you grow, the further you go. Yeah. Well, I guess that just comes back to that point of really understanding and knowing your own process to things. So like, how have you like a self, a self-proclaimed extrovert really adapted to the, the Rona? Oh dude, it sucks. Like, I don't even, I don't even really know what to do right now with, with any of my free time. Like, I've kind of just gone in this, in this rut and, you know, I, I, and like I said, I acknowledge that I'm there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how I was saying with the rats, I acknowledge that I am in this creative rut where I don't feel like doing anything and everything's kind of been just lackluster. I, I guess mm. that's a way to describe it. Um, so For me, my creative energy really flows when I'm going, when I, when I got the gears going, right? Like it's a lot harder to stop at a red light and get your car going again than it is to just keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Requires more energy, more, more doing and all that. And it's not that I don't understand the times that we're living in. I mean, like you and I are doing a Zoom meeting here and whatnot. So like I get how to do that. I can, I can do that. Um, but you know, with everything changing every day that we're doing, I mean, I know you, I said you got to adapt, but when you're, when your core self wants, you know, to, to live your life at this certain way. And now you're being told, no, you can't do that. Cause right now the world that we live in is it's basically forced everybody to be introverted. Right. So you yeah. have to cut yourself off. And for introverts, they're probably like, hell yeah, this is great. I don't have to talk to anybody. Like I can do it. I can just sit at home all day. And there is still that part of me that's like that. But, you know, like going to shows, going out, just having a good time with, you know, your friends, your family, um, your other people in your creative circle and whatnot, just all that being gone and not being able to do the stuff that you normally do that you take for granted yeah. is it's really hard on the, on the spirit. You know what I mean? Oh no, entirely. And I think that's the, we are beings of, I guess you would say human nature itself. We need to each other around, right. you know, and it's like, it's kind of like everything in life where any type of animal, any type of infant, any baby, you know, if you don't have love, you die. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, that's one of the kind of greater, harsh realities of this lockdown is just how many people have, you know, committed suicide overdoses because, you know, when they're, when they don't have that outlet of expression and community, really, you know, you lose that sense of, honestly, it's a connection with not just like yourself, but life. Cause right. I think that's the stuff that I find is always fascinating with this is that, you know, yeah, some people are, you know, oh, this is great. You know, introverts don't have to worry about it, but in a lot of ways I find it as a, uh, it's an opportunity for us to learn, but it's also an opportunity for us to recognize like how important we need to really value human to human connection. Yeah. I mean, I agree a hundred percent. Like I I've never even really been one to like, like never in my life have I been like, Oh, I'm, I'm mad depressed right now. Like don't talk to me. I got mad, mad depression, mad anxiety. But like now I get it, you know, like I, I 
totally understand it. And, you know, I'm in the state of mind where I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to do anything stupid. Like, I'm not going to just end everything right now because it'll, it'll go on. But I totally get it because like my Uh entire creative energy has just been so drained from, from my spirit. And then anytime I do say, you know, pick up like one photography gig every three months or think of some lines to write down for an album, since I haven't had that consistency and, and, you know, chugga, 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 chugga of the train. Yeah. Like every time you're like, oh, I forgot how to do this. Okay, here we go again. All right. Well, I'm going to forget this again. Forget this energy again. Forget this, this, this motion to go where I'm going. And then I just got to stop and start up again. So yeah. that's been tricky for sure. And then, I mean, of course, you know, all, all my years plans getting, getting pooped on. I was supposed to do like a bunch of shows. We were going to drop that album, go on tour. Um, I was about to make a career switch, like all this stuff that was supposed to go down at the beginning of the year. And then that just went down the drain. And so now I feel like it's, it put a wall in front of everything that I was trying to do this year. And I know, you, you know, not to get caught up on the past, but when you had this, this is what I was saying about planning. When you have this plan and it doesn't go the way you wanted it to, and now you're stuck in this situation, what are you going to do? So I've been trying mm. to find the best ways that I can to at least, you know, use my introversion time to, to its fullest extent. So I've been like playing video games that I've wanted to play for a long time or getting back into trading cards, um, hanging out with roommates, watching lots of movies. So I found other things to do to, for that creative side and like exercising my mind and whatnot. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm super sad though that the gyms aren't open because like I had a pretty good exercise thing going for a while and now I got chunky cheeks, but it'll, it'll go away. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I love it and I really appreciate, you know, the honesty because it's one of those things where people are so caught up in this the superficial aspect especially with like the world of social media and just all the stuff that everyone only shows all the good stuff that's out there they never really show the realness that really creates everything that you know we all like to post and right. i think it's that's that's the type of stuff that people really need to hear and understand it's like dude you're not alone like no one's alone in any of this stuff and mm. it's that's that's the kind of like catch 22 and paradox of our current modern time is that we have such technology to be so connected and just like actually truly interconnected as things really are right but we're so disconnected even more and then now with the rona it's even more disconnected so yeah. being able to actually like recognize the situation and you know do the things that you know will actually speak true to your heart and still do the mental work and all these other things is incredibly important just to really just talk on and just give people that inspiration and drive just know that's like yo like you can do it too you know you listeners I'm talking to you. You can do it too. And I guess that's one of the things where the way I like to see it, this is a huge like kudos to you, is that you still haven't lost that spark and love for the play of life. You know, despite everything that is going on and you having to go through this process of just like trying to adapt and adjust to things, like, you know, you still do have that high energy, high spirit. And like that's where paper chase, that's where I know like comes out. It really just <laughs> brings that high energy to like any type of platform or whatever you're doing. And I think that's one of the reasons why I would really want to highlight you and have you on the show is because you're one of the most genuine people I've ever met. You know, I, I think that's just something that's again, well, like, you know, real, real recognizes real. Let's not forget that. And it's <laughs> that point where, you know, you truly are like that wherever I've seen you in all the different settings. And it's just that energy you carry about yourself that it's like, you know, that's someone who's gotten there through testing themselves and kind of going through that self exploration and that self mastery process. So like, what would be some of your biggest advice for us, the listeners and the youth that are maybe listening to this, that are going through this phase of boredom and influence? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm bored right now too. I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. I will tell you that, but don't make stupid decisions with that. Okay. Like yeah, find man. something to do at least that's not destructive or at least just stall time. Like literally just buy yourself some time until we're out of it. Like if your boat is sinking, just get as much water out of there as you can. Like just <laughs> get it out of there. Don't just accept it and just drown. No, just try and stall as long as you can. Um, but as far as, you know, just going through life, being genuine, all that, it all comes down to one simple phrase, and that is, fuck it. 
Mm. Or in the spiritual community, also known as indifference. <laughs> indifference, yes. And I use I use the word indifferent a lot. Like if I'm given choice to be like I'm indifferent on it, I don't really care. Like it's indifference. Yeah, it's uh, that's good. That's that's exactly what it is. Yes. Doesn't that's all it? funny. Well, it's the ability not to create pressure that doesn't exist and not create problems that don't exist. And I think that's right. a skill that a lot of people just lack. Really? I mean, that's point blank statement on that. Yeah. And I mean, like that, uh, that's, that's great that that's, you're acknowledging that too. Cause like in a couple of my past relationships and whatnot, whether it's with people or with uh, the ladies, it's always been like, Oh, why don't you think there's a problem here? And then my response is, well, there's not like you're making a problem out of something that's not there. So therefore there's no problem. You're making up a problem that doesn't exist. And so that's not a problem. You know what I mean? Bars. No, it's dude. It's right. 99% of the problems we experience in our life are self-created. Yes. Like, and that's, you know, I'd like to see anyone really challenge any of us on that point, because in truth, it's all a game of, like you said earlier, perception. It's right. all how you see it. It's how you see yourself. It's how you choose to react or rather I say, escape the reaction and learn how to respond, you know, a, yeah. a, approach the scene and digest it and really, you know, act accordingly. Yeah. I mean, like you gotta, you gotta act accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Like my, my situation with me being kind of a chunky boy right now, putting on my 20, 20, 20. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. <laughs> no, I'm not a freshman 15, but it's your 20, 20, 20. <laughs> um, <I> love it. <laughs> like it's my fault. Yeah. Like I haven't been able to go work out. I haven't, I haven't been eating the best. I haven't been taking care of myself as good as I can. I'm not over here like, Oh, woe is me. I got a, got a tummy and some big cheeks. No, whatever. It's my fault. It's going to go away in like a year. So like, fine, whatever. Um, so, so many people love blaming the world for their problems, but once you really accept that a lot of the problems are yourself, like, like, like broke people, a lot of the time, 90% of the time, it's your fault. You, you went and were foolish and you spent all your money and now you don't have any money and now you're complaining that you don't have any money. Who did it? Like, right? There's like the whole meme of like, of like someone who, who's taking my credit card and buying all this stuff. Like, well, come on, like, look in the mirror. Well, I mean, that right there though is our culture doesn't really breed or really promote nor does it really reward accountability. I mean, in truth, our society does reward accountability because it's really only the accountable beings reach that successful point. But right. we're not really conditioned to be accountable. We are kind of forced to point the finger all the time. And I'm just very like, mm -hmm. where did you come to this point of recognition where it's just like, oh, I'm responsible for my own stuff? Like, when did uh, you reach that accountability awakening? Well, here's the thing. I honestly will always try and get out of any situation i can i will lawyer the shit out of everything like i will object everything like if it's my fault it's my fault like if it is directly my fault no problem except responsibility done deal but if there are circumstances along the way that led to it and i'll be like well actually you see this happened and then that led me to make this action and then that is why this happened so it's still like accepting responsibility but without accepting responsibility uh, interesting it always got me in trouble with my mom uh, and uh, uh it still gets me in trouble to this day but it's not that i'm not saying oh it wasn't me it's me trying to rationalize my actions and then people don't want to hear that they just want to hear oh um no that that's your fault accept it done deal but if you i feel like if people give other people the chance to like rationalize why they made the decision that they did or why they did what they did or didn't do then the world will come to a place of greater understanding of, oh, okay, well, like they're human too. They had a thought process that led to this decision. And so that's why they made this decision. Uh, so even if it is mm. something that you did is bad or that's your fault, you can say, well, listen, here's the circumstances. Here's, <clears throat> excuse me, here's the situation. And here's why I did these things. So it's not saying that you're not responsible for it. It's just mm. saying that you might have had surrounding circumstances that work. Like, for example, oh, they are driving your car in the rain and some guy in front of you slams on his brakes and you don't have time to stop but you, you stop you hit your brakes but your car slides because it's wet and you hit the guy okay end of the day i'm a big i'm a big 
big picture guy. So at the end of the day, what happened? You hit the guy. That's what happened, okay? But it was raining. It, you, you guy slammed on his brakes. Yeah. You hit the brakes and you slid. And you got all these outside circumstances that lead to it. So you're still accepting responsibility for what happened at that point. But you can say, listen, here's why this thing happened. You're not just saying, oh, I, yeah, I did it. You can rationalize why you did something and grow from it and learn from there. So then maybe next time it's raining, you remember that you got to not be as close to the person or, you know, slow down a little bit or anything like that. Right. So you learn yeah, yeah, yeah. from these things that you make based on what happened to lead you in into another decision in the past. No, I like that a lot. And it's a very interesting way to put the whole concept of just like self-reflection in, you know, analyzing yourself and your actions. And that's something that, again, like I feel people don't necessarily, I mean, I know a lot of people relate to that, but I also know a lot of people don't because right. they're purely caught up in that state of reaction. They don't yep. even give themselves time to think about like, well, why am I doing this? Well, what is the response? What's the cause and effect of this? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I like to say uh, that uh, this has been an incredible Thanksgiving episode. I got a lot to be grateful here. And looking over my notes, I'll just keep it really brief here. We don't want to create a whole nother show. <laughs> but I would have to say that one of the responses you had to Peter's questions had to do with a very subtle answer. You said, sometimes you just got to say, fuck it. Yeah. And I got to, I got to agree with you there. Like there's a subtle art <laughs> to the law of fuck it. Yeah. And, and, and what I get is that, and I'll break it down in closing and I'll say, if you don't like something, change it. Mm -hmm. If you can't change it, accept it. Mm -hmm. And if you can't accept it, get over it. Damn. Right? Damn. And if you get to the point where you're not able to get over it, you just got to say, fuck it. And oh, on. no, Rusty. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm using that. Well, I used to ignore the voices in my head, but now they're starting to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and a happy holidays. Despite what's going on in this world right now, we have each other. Stick together and have a happy always. Roll the outro. And that concludes this episode of Creatives Chat. Thank you for watching. Join us every Thursday at 3.33 p.m. Pacific Daily Time as creative minds get together and chat about who knows what. View more episodes on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again to our sponsors for making this show possible. Thanks for joining us.